Despite being opening day of baseball, it gives us a chance to celebrate the teams we love and the ballparks they play in. That's right. The book Rally Caps, Rain Delays, and Racing Sausages <laughs> tips its caps to the best ballparks in America. And we're joined now by the author, and he's a big-time Yankee fan, Eric Kabkoff. How are you, Eric? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me. You're, you're from the New Haven area, right? Yep. Yeah, I grew up here. Grew up as a Yankee fan. And, you know, growing up here is a great place for baseball fans because you have the intersection of three distinct fan bases. Because sure. Yankee fans south of the city, mm -hmm. Red Sox fans north, and Mets fans scattered in and all around. I told you there were some other Mets fans Mets around fans. here. A few. Mets just fan. a few. Yeah. <laughs> Remember those sausages and the title of the book here, the, the mascots there? Remember mm -hmm. somebody hit them with the bat? Yeah, Eric yeah. was actually one of the sausages. I don't know if you know that, but that's one of the facts that I you'll find I still have the bruise, the actually. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I see it there. It's a little bruiser <laughs> over there. So, so, so you visited every yeah. single park in every, the United States? Uh, every major league park. Okay. Yeah, every major league park and uh, I finished, it took about five and a half years to do and I, I wrote a book about the trips and about what fans see from the seats, when, which you can't see when you're watching it on TV mm -hmm. uh, during the commercials. Uh, things like the sausages racing, that's part of the title, sausages <laughs> racing in Milwaukee between the bases or the hot sauce race in Houston. Um, or, or, or the dinosaur that comes out in Colorado, uh, the purple dinosaur to signify the dinosaur bones that were found when they were constructing the ah. ballpark. So it wasn't Barney? No, no, that was not Barney. Okay. Right. No. Well, we were saying the games are three hours long, and you somehow you have to entertain people rather than just putting on the game, right? Well, there's a lot more to it now than just a game. Right. You know, you got lots of big pictures everywhere and lots of great food everywhere, and it's a lot more than just sitting there watching the game these days. Sure. Well, let's talk about the food, because really yeah. the highlight of my trip to a ballpark <laughs> is the hot dog and the food that you're going to eat. Where do you think has the best food? Well, everywhere you look, there, there's great food nowadays. Uh, San Francisco's park is known for its food, especially because San Francisco is known for its food. Sure. So that translates very well to the, in the culinary diversity of the city being available here there at the ballpark as well. And you've got places like Fenway, the Fenway Franks, you've got the Dodger Dogs. Uh, when I was in Minneapolis at the old Metrodome that doesn't exist anymore, at least where the Twins don't play anymore, I had a 12-topping hot dog there. That's incredible. It sounds very healthy, too. <laughs> A little bit messy, probably, It probably I took say. a year yeah, off I mean, my life, but it was very, very worth it. It was worth, worth it. it. it was Absolutely. Worth it. Let's, let's talk about some of the local teams and, and what makes them so different. Yankees, Red Sox, and Mets. There's a lot of tradition going on there. Well, absolutely. In the Northeast is where baseball really started. And so the, the teams have the longest and deepest histories up here. Um, the Yankees, obviously, with all their success they've had, the 27 championships, they, they sell the nostalgia. They're, they're retiring their numbers now like crazy, uh, particularly now when they're projected to have poorer teams on the field. Mm. Uh, the Red Sox also sell their nostalgia in a little bit of a different way because they've had a lot of great players through the years. They had, a long, of course, a long drought there of championships, so they can't really celebrate any of that, the championship list years uh, in terms of, uh, of those terms. But uh, that, you know, of course, Ted Williams and Jim Rice and Carlos Jones and all the, the great players that passed through there through the years. Um, and then the Mets have their two world championships, which are, of course, were huge achievements and very well celebrated, as they should be. Um, they've also had a, a bunch of great players. And they also celebrate the history of the Brooklyn Dodgers, uh, especially now with City Field, the way it's designed uh, there as well. And uh, Teresa is, is actually going shopping after the show today for her, her Mets onesie for her baby. <laughs> we need that, right? Yeah. Let's take a look at some pictures. Uh, the first one we have is uh, Wrigley Field in Chicago. And what makes this uh, stadium stand out? Well, Wrigley Field is very very authentic. It's an old school stadium. A lot of stadiums now that they that are built call back to the old stadiums of, of yesteryear. Wrigley Field is actually one of those parks. It's still there from 1914, uh, and it's right in the middle of a thriving urban neighborhood, which you don't have anymore. And, and it has the ivy in, in, the ivy in, on in the left wall. field. Right now, they're doing some massive renovations there. They're actually putting a big video board up there, which is going to be very unusual. But of course, in 1987, it was very unusual when they had lights there too, because they're the last ballpark to even install lights. Now, uh, people, uh, 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 no, I'm sorry. The people sit on the the roofs of the buildings, right? And they yep. can mm. see there. I'm pretty sure my parents did that. Uh, Absolutely, the rooftops up. all around. Uh, people there charge admission for people to come and sit on their on their balconies or the rooftops and watch the games from there as well. And you're supposed to throw the ball back, right, at Wrigley? <laughs> it depends who hits the home run. Okay, fair. <laughs> 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 that's key. That's key. Next up, we have Kauffman Stadium uh, in Kansas City. Of course, they were in the World Series last year. What makes this park so different? Uh, Kauffman Stadium was uh, built in the 70s, and it was one of the first, uh, one of the only baseball-only ballparks built in that time. At that time, you had a lot of multi-purpose stadiums built in Philadelphia, Cle uh, Pittsburgh. 
um, St. Louis, Three Cincinnati, River Stadium. Three River Stadium. Yeah. These were multi-purpose ballparks that really, it, the joke was, and it wasn't even really a joke, that you didn't really even know which city you were in until you looked at the field to see the uniforms of the opposing players. Because um, they were so because generic. They were all they were generic. generic. They were all the same. They were baseball. They were football. This was an actual baseball-only ballpark built in Kansas City. Kansas City is a very, very rich baseball history going back to the 19th century. Uh, very rich Negro League history as well. The Kansas City Monarchs. The Negro League Museum is there. Uh, Buck O'Neill, great uh, face of the game, was there and, and uh, based there, and he's actually buried there. And, and then there's a statue of him now in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's not, he wasn't inducted in the Hall of Fame, but there's a statue there commemorating his oh. contribution to the game as well. So a lot of history there, then. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play you in trivia, baseball <laughs> trivia. <laughs> I think we know uh, who would win. It's true. All right, let's put up another picture here, and you can tell us what we're looking at. Oh, that's me and Carlton Fisk <laughs> at U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. Uh, he's that's a little taller than you there. Just a little. Yeah. Most people are. Um, but uh, and he's also a little bit of a better baseball player than I ever was. Uh, just a little bit. A big Red Sox star and White Sox star. He's also a Hall of Famer. All right. And, and then we have one more. Uh, it's, it's a demolished stadium. Tell us about this That's one. the Metrodome. That's where I had that great 12-topping hot dog. Uh -huh. And this is a place where if you're ever going to talk about unique ballparks, you probably start with this one. Because I think in the first inning, my, my friend and I were sitting there watching, and the ball bounced over the third baseman like it was on a pogo stick because it's just a rug there, yeah. you know, and there's a big garbage bag hanging off the right field um, bleachers there uh, that, that rustles when, when the noise comes and people make noise, and the noise levels, the decibel levels are off the charts there. Uh, oh. Jet engine, you know, really? there. during the World Series when the Twins won, they got some credit for the fans maybe artificially inflating the noise levels, now they're saying. <laughs> but. Will that just happen to another team, the Atlanta Falcons? They just got uh, in, in trouble for that. I don't know if you guys heard about that. But, but lastly, we have Comerica Park in Detroit. Comerica Park is a gorgeous new park, relatively new park. It's about 15 years old now. It replaced a gem, a Tiger Stadium is one of the true authentic ones, along with Fenway and Wrigley, which the Tigers no longer play in now, mm -hmm. of course. Um, and Comerica has call-outs to the history of the team everywhere. There are little exhibits dotting the concourses about the great history of the, of the team. Uh, and the great players who have passed through there and the great baseball history that they have throughout their existence. Eric, thank you again so much for, for joining us here today. Again, the name of the book and the website where we can check it out? Rally Caps, Rain Delays, and Racing Sausages. There you you go. can find it at rallyrainsausage.com. And, and, and you'll also we'll see Eric there. online. He'll be racing in his sausage outfit <laughs> after the show. That was great. Thanks so much for all Thanks the for information. Me. Again, Eric. We appreciate it. And coming up, we'll